Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. First, prudence. Very unfashionable prudence. Very unfashionable. As Edmund Burke said, though, it is the god of this lower world. Without prudence, any policy is doomed to fail. What does prudence mean? I'll give you two examples of kind of imprudent behavior recently. Uh, the first one relates to Iraq. Um, launching military operations is always the most dangerous thing that you can do. You are risking the blood of your people, the dreams of all those people who will die to, to create a cause. Doesn't mean you don't do it, but you have to be reverent about that. You have to be careful and thoughtful about doing that, and you have to think of them not as toy soldiers. You have to, for instance, know the body count, as Deputy, uh, Deputy Secretary of Defense Wolfowitz did not. That was not a mistake. That was an ethical lapse. You should know about the people you're sending out to do something, and you should be aware that they also have families and dreams and hopes and children. It doesn't mean don't do it, but it means be aware of the stakes that you're involving the country in. That is what prudence is about. There was no plan in Iraq to control public unrest and looting. There was no plan for a counterinsurgency. There was no plan to secure Iraq's borders. There was no plan to deal with sectarian violence. There was no plan to engage Sunni leaders or Grand Ayatollah Sistani, the most powerful man in the country. There was no plan to protect the nuclear materials at Tuwaitha power station. And after all, nuclear materials were the reason ostensibly the war was fought in the first place. There was no plan for Iraqi reconstruction, and today we found out the guns that we handed out to the Iraqi army, 97% of them were not registered, meaning we don't know their serial numbers, so we will never know what happens to them. As I drove my parents here, I almost drove into a divider when I heard this. These are not small mistakes. This is a profound ethical lapse, because it fails to prepare for entirely predictable developments. The CIA had post-war reconstruction plans. I served on a Council on Foreign Relations Task Force that have post-war reconstruction plans. Brookings had a good plan. Heritage had a plan. There were a variety of plans out there. There were a variety of people thinking about this. And obviously, the answer was, when presented with these plans, thanks, but no thanks. We know better. And obviously, they didn't. That is not prudential. <coughs> At the macro level, there wasn't a lot of prudence either. Our neoconservative friends, Mr. Kagan and Mr. Crystal, one of my favorite moments of the week was watching Bob Kagan on Charlie Rose try to pretend he had nothing to do with the current administration. <laughs> Don't let him get away with it, folks. And Charlie Rose didn't ask him a follow-up. What, what is going on with the press? Well, that's okay, Mr. Kagan. We love your book. Our job is, is to actually have follow-up here. He's like, oh, it's great. Wonderful book. And Kagan said sonorously, well, the world's more multipolar than we knew, Charlie. <laughs> as though he had no, no role in what happened, no fingerprints on this at all. And it's up to us in a democracy to do a little better than that. In 99, Kagan and Crystal edited a book written by neoconservatives, which former British diplomat Jonathan Clark remarked would lead to the U.S. to have to fight five wars at once, if you actually followed the precepts that were laid down. Because steely resolve was the watchword, regardless of what the area was. The Bush administration and Democratic hawks within the Democratic administration agree that we should fight Al-Qaeda, stabilize Afghanistan and destroy the Taliban, transform Iraq, block Iran from its nuclear program, and secure regime change if possible, uh, have a democratic agenda in the Middle East, roll back Russian influence in the former USSR, contain China in the long run, making them a status quo power and leading to regime change ultimately there. Well. That is a recipe for failure everywhere. If you try to do everything, you will fail at everything. And overstretch. The one book none of these guys seem to have written, read is Gibbon, The Decline of the Roman Empire. Overstretch. All these things are noble goals. None of these things at the goal level are bad ideas. But if you try to do 15 of them, if you laundry list everything, as both the Democrats in all their papers and the Republicans in all theirs do, read the National Security Decision Directive, or even read the new one which is less crazy than the 2002 one. It's a laundry list of things without ever saying which are more important than the other. There's never a hierarchy of priority, as though they were all equally important. If everything's equally important, nothing is important. 
and that's why we have overstretch here. Prudence would lead us to the ultimate ethical goal, which is stewardship. If somebody asked me what my role would be as an analyst or a future administration person, it would simply be to leave the United States better for my child than I found it. That strikes me as a profoundly moral goal, which leads you to limits as what you can do. Not doing nothing, but being sensible about what one does attempt to do.